so here we go. Uh, hi, uh, this is Proxmox and NFS specifically, not ZFS, but NFS, uh, and, and, and backups on Proxmox. So first, let's just go into, for those that don't know who this is that's talking at you. Hi, my name's Jesse. Uh, there's a picture of me and all the things that I do and get involved with on my wall, a bunch of certs. And so handsome. Stickers and stuff. Thanks, Magos. Uh, and uh, from events I go to and such, uh, just a huge cyber nerd, really. And um, so, so yeah, that's. I have so much other things to say, but in a nutshell, there you go. Uh, if you want to know more, go ahead and go to LinkedIn, and you will know more. So cool. So on the agenda today, we're gonna go over what is Proxmox. Like I really love Proxmox. What I tried, and oh my gosh, did I try a bunch of stuff. Uh, what I have, uh, and what I ended up with. So I uh, hope you all enjoy this journey. Uh, you, you'll go through it a lot uh, smoother than I did. So I'm gonna back out of that, and I'm just gonna take what Microsoft says what Proxmox is. So I know I'm not doing AI, I'm just doing plain old search, but this is pretty good. So uh, Proxmox is an open source platform. Oh, what just happened here? Oh my gosh, we're not printing, folks. Oh, geez, what, what? Well, there goes my, um, your streaming's still going, right? Yeah, it's going. That was awesome. So unexpectedly, Microsoft decided to break. So okay, we're back. I restored everything. That was crazy. Um, all right, so back on track. So yep, uh, using Microsoft Bing. What is Proxmox? It's an open source platform. It's it's a KVM hypervisor that contains uh, Linux containers and virtual machines. It's Debian based. Uh, it's not like Microsoft Hyper-V, where it's Microsoft-based, that kind of thing. Uh, they also pride themselves in having a cool web interface for easy management. And just of lately, they now have this software-defined networking in there. And, and from what this description says, software-defined storage, which I don't know too much about that. Maybe Warlock does later. Uh, and then lastly, it looks like at the very end there, uh, it's it's... It's boasting high availability clusters. So yeah, that's, that is what Proxmox is. I'll show you more on what it is. Uh, and let me look at some of the features. So I, I basically queried what are the features. And again, they said high availability clustering is great. Uh, live migration, which uh, I have some qualms with that. Uh, uh, backup server, which we'll go over some backup stuff today and some live restores, like live live restores. And uh, of course it's a KVM hypervisor and it's got container support uh, and it's capable of a wide range of hardware <clears throat> to a point. Uh, uh, and that's kind of, that started one of my roads to uh, creating this backup was I went ahead and on some really old hardware, like, I don't know, 10 years old or more, probably more. Uh, I went from Proxmox version 7.4 to like eight and basically it died and I had all my VMs on that one uh, Proxmox server. And so I had to rebuild everything. Oh my gosh, was that a pain. Jesse, real, real quick, I, you might cover this later, but I'm curious yeah. about the, the particular problem that you have. Do you think it's like a, a limitation of the Debian kernel or something that Proxmox itself is doing that that's causing the hardware issue? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I just know that it really aired out bad um, <clears throat> and didn't boot into Proxmox. And I tried everything and tried an old hard drive that was already imaged that worked on the old, on another system, but didn't work in my particular system. So it definitely was an old thing. Yeah, I don't know. That's really painful don't... when that happens, when an update oh. kills everything. Yeah. Yeah. I probably rebuilt Proxmox probably four or five times in various different issues so that's kind of what brought me to this road of like oh my gosh i need like i need an nfs backup well actually i'll tell you how i get to my road to nfs backup but um gotcha. but yeah i ultimately got here but yeah great question uh so yeah let's go ahead and uh turn on the slideshow again so uh we went into uh what proxmox is uh is really great 
Uh, and then the next couple of slides, we'll, we'll talk about what I tried. I'll show you some of the stuff I have and, um, and then what I ended up with. So <clears throat> what I tried uh, here on the right is just kind of a, a, a graphic of like, hey, I tried using this Etsy Keeper thing. I tried using just templates and, and cloning those over or SCPing those over. I tried the, the actual Proxmox cluster migration deal and it took much longer than I liked. Uh, that could be also hardware. Like I have like desktop stuff, not like enterprise grade servers. Uh, so that's another, you know, uh, constraint that I have. I tried even Terraform or Packer says, screw it. I don't need a backup. I'll just build it all on the fly uh, at, at the time. And that proved to be really difficult. And then I tried uh, Samba, uh, I tried NFS on Ubuntu, uh, and then like lastly, I tried uh, Synology, uh, luckily because I was talking to somebody else on a different Discord, and they were like, oh yeah, I just use Synology NFS. Uh, and for full disclosure, it was Mubix on a CCDC uh, Discord, and so like thank goodness for him, because that finally was the the final thing that got through. So, oh my gosh, I owe a lot to that bit of uh, information. So, um, yeah, so cluster migrations, like for instance, it took like 10 minutes for a 32 gig gigabyte um, VM to uh, do the cluster migration, which was too long for me. And you'll see how long I'll do the same amount, I think the same amount, or maybe a lot smaller amount, or maybe more, I don't remember, but it'll be way faster than this, uh, you'll see. Uh, but yeah, that took too long. Uh, Etsy Keeper was like this interesting new stuff that I didn't know about. Someone told me at work, basically, uh, uh, on Linux, you have the Etsy file and like all that stuff in there. Basically, this was a thing to like basically uh, put it in GitHub, you could say. Uh, and then I could just git pull it onto a different system. That was, there was just a whole bunch of weirdness with that. Um, then I tried to copy over templates uh, using CloudInit, Ansible, uh, to start from like templates to clone them. And boy, that was just, it was just irritating. Uh, <laughs> the same with the Terraform and Packer. I like, you know, I even, you know, some people that had built out their Terraform and Packer and it worked, you know, years ago and doesn't work today, ask them like, hey, you know, I've been trying this and that. And they basically are like, yeah, we're not supporting this. <laughs> Good luck. I'm like, great. Uh, so that didn't really work. Uh, and neither did a bunch of other stuff here. Uh, ultimately, the Synology NFS uh, worked. So yeah, so we'll drive right into what I have. So this is kind of a split screen here. It's hard to tell, but it is a split screen. Uh, on the left here is like my, and this will be a theme going forward, cybers at the top here under data center. Uh, that's one Proxmox, and over here is PVE, is my second one with obviously less uh, machines in it uh, that I'll go ahead and restore too. As you can see in this screenshot, this is kind of uh, showing uh, my hand a bit, where you see down here it says NFS share is a, a drive, and then over on the left here is another NFS share uh, that I had hooked up, uh, but we'll go more into that uh, soon. So really, what does this look like? What does that cyber main Proxmox look like? Well, it's really this desktop right here. It's this desktop, this, this T5500 workstation uh, from Dell. It's a precision. And uh, I just had it from so long ago, so long ago. Um, uh, and I guess you can get it too for uh, very cheap, but it's only gonna work with like 7-4 version of Proxmox. It will not go to eight. That is for sure, uh, as much as I've tried. Uh, and then so onward to the second backup Proxmox, that's the PVE. And so that's on some newer hardware, but it, it's just a, a, a Hewlett Packer, uh, compact 8300, small factor, believe it or not, uh, and is even cheaper. Uh, and I haven't tried to upgrade that yet. Um, but I think it can, I can't remember if I actually already did, but anyways, this is what I'm working with, uh, for those people that are living in condos or small places that can't afford, like, uh, or just can't, don't have the space for a server. Gosh, I wish I had, I had like server infrastructure. And then, uh, last but not least my Synology. So this is a picture of a Synology. Well, a couple pictures, a bunch of 
uh, some apologies, but uh, uh, the DS216, which is pretty old by now. I was surprised to see that like it would go for like three hundred and thirty dollars online. Uh, super surprised. I I've now upgraded though. I have a DS seven twenty three plus, but I haven't uh, I haven't done much with it yet. Um, but this is what I have um, currently in the working state. So to go into this a little bit deeper, it's only got it really only has these two drives right here, uh, one and two, uh, and. They're hard drives, they're NAS quality hard drives, and they're what they're considered a um, Synology hybrid RAID configuration. Uh, basically just means if I lose one, <clears throat> I better hurry up and buy another one, put it in there really quick so it can duplicate over to that one drive uh, so I don't lose my data. That's what that means. Uh, but that's good enough uh, for me. Uh, and so ultimately I ended up with an NFS share on that Synology drive that you saw with a bunch of backups that if either one of my Proxmoxes died, I don't care. Um, I could just uh, rebuild the Proxmox GUI really quick and just restore these backups that you see all right here. Um, so uh, kind of what does that, like how does that happen? So for me, and it can happen different ways for different people, is I'll just have my main Proxmox, Proxmox 1 in this picture, uh, connect to an NFS share. Then on that main Proxmox, I'll like have all my VMs, whatever. And when I have them in a pristine state or a state that I want to keep them in, I'll just do a backup of them. And they'll just sit there. And I'll go ahead and jump over to my Proxmox 2, my backup one, and hit a, um, basically connect the NFS share to that and select the backup on the NFS share and just click restore and it'll restore like in no time to the Proxmox uh, backup. So really though, I can share this Notion uh, link, which will get you directly here. So let me copy this. Uh, I hope I can share it. Somebody let me know if this actually works. I don't know if I've <clears throat> given the permissions correctly, but I put it in the meetup text. Here, I'll <laughs> test it out. Okay, cool. Thanks, Sean. Oh, uh, yep, it works. Yay. All right. Yeah. So um, there's that for people if you want to follow along. Um, so really the goal of this was to be able to back up my virtual machines um, in case my SSD drive failed, uh, which has happened to me. Uh, or <laughs> I upgraded Proxbox and it failed, which has also happened to me. Uh, I'm looking at you. Proxmox version eight on my really old hardware. Uh, it went pretty sideways uh, and it was uh, no fun. Uh, we've already kind of went through all of these things. So I'm just gonna fast forward, but as you can see, we've got a, only really three, uh, four labs here. So we'll go into, uh, this is step-by-step. Step. So if we go into Synology, uh, I'll have the, the slide deck, this slide deck here. So you can click on that, hopefully, uh, and get this slide deck after uh, the fact. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so we'll go through this. Uh, we still have plenty of time uh, left. So uh, for those that want to actually see the whole flow, basically I go into my Synology. So really I can do that now. So here's my Synology. And what I'm going to show is going into uh, this control panel, uh, and here's the share folders and file services, but let's get back to the lab. Here again is the control panel. Here's that file services and shared folders area. Uh, I pretty much click on the file services because we want a new service. The service is gonna be an NFS service. So with that service right here, uh, I had to enable NFS service, kind of makes sense. Um, and then I went down to the share, I went out into the shared folders area and had to create a folder. That also kind of makes sense. Uh, I went up share folders right here and then it allows you to create. So like if I went back here, folders, create, uh, and then I can create whatever I wanted. Um, but I created this NFS share is what I created. So you just fill in with whatever name you want, uh, description, whatever you want. Um, 
And you could change some other things, but I just kept it EX4, EXT4, which by the way, my new uh, DS723 does um, encryption. Was that BTFS? I forget what it is. But anyways, does uh, something that I'm going to look into doing for encrypted uh, drive stuff. ButterFS. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, it has that here, though. I, I don't remember seeing that here. <clears throat> Thanks, Magos. And then let's see here. Uh, then we'll go into, once that's created, the folder's there, we would have to click into the name and go ahead and edit it. And once you're in the edit, as you can see here, edit, shared folder, NFS, uh, we would have to go ahead and click on the NFS permissions tab over here. Once we do that, as you can see, it's open with the blue text. Uh, we can go ahead and, as you can see, there's two entries here. One is uh, 170 is my main Proxmox and 12 is my backup. Basically, I had to create uh, for both of them um, and, and provide the IP addresses and then map the root to guest. So I guess the guest is only actually writing stuff. And so here it is kind of showing uh, what they call an NFS rule is the permission. So, hey, here's my main Proxmox 170. Yes, I want it to read and write because otherwise it'd be no good for backup and restore. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna map it over to a guest account and uh, probably remove other you know, high privilege stuff. But um, I think all this other stuff was kind of already default in here. So I just left the defaults there so going forward uh oh yeah so i just had this is kind of a re-reminder i had to do one for each proxmox one for 70 and one for uh 12. Uh, and so really on the synology that's really it just creating the share creating permissions for the share and and, and, and you're good to go so then we would go into the, our proxmox so we'd go under the gui so let's say let's go into mice the one I have right now. So I've got cyber here. So under data center, uh, as you can see, uh, well, let me kind of uh, show this a little bit. So right here, what I've got are pools. Uh, so if I go data center and I scroll down, I go pools right here. I can say this is, let's see here, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. whatever pool I want, and I created a pool. So there's the pool. Uh, what I can do is I can do a data center. Uh, whoops, open that up. And instead of having this sift here, let me go under um, Linux, members, sift. I'm just gonna remove it for now, say yes. Uh, and then so if I have pools, <clears throat> uh, there's gonna be things in the in the pools uh so you know it's just a way of categorizing things all my linux desktops are here all my linux servers are here all my windows desktops are here uh so so forth and so on uh if you don't have something it'll sit outside of those pools that they call pools and like this one so if i wanted to put it in a pool though i could select the pool it'll say members i'll say add uh i know it's a virtual machine i'll click yep i want that one and boom now it's in its own pool. So cool, great, that's awesome, uh, neat. And back to, back to the lab. So I had to show the pools, I had to kind of explain the pools because it kind of, it, I'll go into a little bit more of how like, hmm, how it plays into the backups uh, uh, later. Because it's kind of a separate thing than the backups I found. So, so cool, so yep, uh, so we go back to, our GUI, uh, we're going to go specifically into storage because we want to create a storage because as you can see in the picture, there is no storage right now. There's only this local and local uh, dash LVM. So we go into your data center, you go to storage and we'll click add. Once we click add, there'll be a drop down menu. You can't see it here in the picture, unfortunately, but, but it'll be a bunch of services like SMB and, and whatnot, but uh, you'll just pick NFS. Uh, once you select NFS, this add NFS will pop up. Uh, an ID can be whatever you want. Uh, the server for me was the IP address 
of the Synology machine that has that I'm gonna I want everything to back up to. And then the export is the actual Synology uh, file path that I wanted. So in the next screenshot, I'll show all that. So in this one, so I just named it whatever. It could have been named NFS Jesse, whatever, but I called it NFS share. Uh, this, you definitely need an IP address. Maybe it'll do URLs, I'm not sure, but uh, I definitely did an IP address. Uh, and then you needed this exact uh, volume. Uh, because uh, so if you go into here and I go to NFS and let's see here, edit. And let's see, oh, there, there is encryption. I just didn't encrypt it. That's interesting. Where is, so I had an interesting thing where I went ahead and I was like, oh, well, I'll just type in the name and and Proxmox was like, no, 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 no. I want the exact, like, the exact path. I forget how I got the exact path. Um, I think I opened it. Where did I open it? Well, we can go into that later. Uh, but, but you need the exact path. Uh, so going forward, after you have the exact path, everything, there's a content area. And in the content area is kind of like what you'll allow in that backup area, like, Disk images, containers, ISOs, what kind of stuff do you want to allow in there? So for instance, we go into here, we go to the data center, right? You go to storage, we say add. Here's all those things that you couldn't see in the screenshots. Uh, here's the NFS. I can say who or SWU, whatever that is. Give the server uh, all this good stuff. Uh, but down here is the content. So here it is, ISOs, container templates, uh, backups. This is very important. This is, we needed this in there because we're doing backups there. Container snippets, whatever. Um, all that good stuff. So I just wanted to show that because <clears throat> couldn't really see that in my pictures. So again, I highlighted you needed this. I forget where this was, but anyways. Uh, so cool. So that's good. Uh, we've got that all squared away in Hopefully that's done in both the Proxmox. Yes, that's only shown this one in this screenshot, but you need to do that on both to get NFS on both. Uh, so let's go into the backup area. So once we have whatever it is, uh, we'll wanna go ahead and select, like for instance, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go um, Ubuntu uh, VM, uh, we'll go into backups. And I'll just say backup now. We can say, hey, I want this to go, we'll want it to go to the NFS share. Um, so go to there and just simply press backup. It'll go through the process there while it does that. We'll go back to our screenshot here. And pretty much that's what I'm explaining here is like pick your storage. And then we'll go on to the next part. So the next part, pretty much saying, hey, check out your backup. Uh, that you're there now. So let me go back here. Uh, we'll go here. So this, I think, I think I have, this is like 100 gigs. So we're at 15% of, or no, is it a 32 gigs? Oh, I guess it's only a 32 gigs. Well, anyways, this is taking a little bit. Um, again, this is on really, this is on really old Synology as well. Um, I think it's even like uh, the NAS hard drive is like 5,400 rounds per minute. Um, kind of deal, so not super fast. <clears throat> but while that goes and does the backups, uh, I'll show this part later. Once it's done, we can go look at it. Um, and this will make it so that we can go to the final restore. Uh, this is the finale, really. This is where it's all at. I mean, a lot of it's this as well. Um, so let's see here, 21, 39. Okay, it's almost there. Anyways, so... Ubuntu 22, let's, uh, let me get rid of this. So let's remove this VM. Go ahead and purge, destroy, because you just, if you don't get rid of some of this stuff, it's gonna make building things uh, harder later on, because if you don't uh, d destroy referenced stuff, like this 100 can't be, can't build another machine and it ID'd as 100, it'll go 101, um, and it's a bunch of other stuff. But anyways, remove that. I'm gonna remove it, but I'm gonna to go to uh, the NFS share. 
and go to the backups. And here's a bunch of backups with notes even. So we'll go to like this Ubuntu. Uh, this one's two gigs, only two gigs, really? Okay, cool. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and click restore. And this is restoring from the NFS, but uh, I want this to be faster uh, later on for things with like snapshots and other deals. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, just go to my local because I have a backup on the NFS on my Synology share. It's cool. Uh, this is really just gonna be my area where I'm just gonna have like fast disk for snapshots and you know that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, start after restore. So I'm gonna click this button here. I'm gonna say restore and it's gonna start restoring. So let's go look at the backup while this is restoring. So the backup looks like it's still running. Interesting. Uh, but it's down, oh, 91%. Okay, so we're almost there, that's nice. Uh, let me go back over here to the uh, restore. The restore is much faster. <laughs> it's at 100 now. Let me do the status. Status says it's running, so it's kind of finishing up some things. Uh, duration's still kind of going, so it's, it's still doing some things. Um, it will start, it'll turn green here once it starts. That's all fantastic. Uh, okay, so this, Looks like this backup finally did the backup. Great, so again, uh, this is great resilience backup for when you finally got that file server or your Ansible or whatever it is that you are you know, working on that you never want to have uh, go away again uh, to go ahead and back up uh, with backups onto your Synology. Uh, super great. Uh, okay, this says stopped okay, that's cool. Uh, so there it is with the green. There's the VM, and there it is saying, okay, okay, as it spins up. So sweet, our data is here, it's safe, uh, back to normal, everything's uh, amazing, I love it. So let's go back to the restore area. Pretty much this is just my documentation of what we just uh, went through uh, and talked about, um, but this is the documentation. Uh, although this is giving me a little bit of like, oh, wait, huh? That's right, so pools, back to pools. So when I was talking about pools uh, briefly uh, here, um, these don't come over with backups. As you can see here, this is just the VM. So what I've seen that I've had to do is I just use SCP and very specifically this user config and this user config. So here's the actual command that I use to get it over there. <clears throat> but um, what it looks like, here's the pools, but what it looks like when I cat it out is pretty much, here are the pools. It just shows you, and then these numbers here are pretty much the VMs that are in the pool. So this, like this Windows server only had one VM, 108, for instance. So yeah, cool. Everyone, you should celebrate. You now have backups. Uh, you never have to rebuild it again. Your data is safe. <laughs> so that concludes uh, my presentation. I'm gonna move uh, onward to the next slide. And